Good morning, everybody. Pastor Mike Mestis, my wife Josie and I, Pastor New Hope in Christ, and we want to welcome you to our Sunday morning service. And uh, we're excited about what we see the Lord doing. And uh, today's subject and my sermon is If My People. I'm referencing uh, 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. And uh, what that generally or basically covers and this is something I've been talking to other pastors about and different people about the value importance and need of prayer if my people who are called by my name is a very uh, direct uh, guidance and uh, awakening by the Lord to the body of Christ to the Jewish people, to the nation itself, even to the lost and the unsaved. Our call is to pray, and it's mandated by God to seek His face. He's not asking us, He's telling us. And uh, church, when you serve God, you do what He says. Once we set down uh, our guide or a guide to operate, under. We're, we're going to see the power of the Lord move in such a way that we're not going to be the same if we abide and adhere to these directives He has in His Word. He can change the path for all mankind. He can change the path of the earth. For that matter, He can even stop the rotation of the earth. He did it for Joshua. So why not do it for us? If my people, Second Chronicles 7.14 states, he says, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and we will forgive their sin and heal their land. So God has a pattern. He has a path that he's telling us to go on. He has a directive. And everything that he's telling us is a valuable point to heal America, to heal the earth for what has taken place due to the uh, coronavirus. This virus has uh, wreaked havoc on the earth. Uh, I think as of the last count, there's over 12,000 uh, dead uh, and, uh, and there are m multiple numbers of deaths throughout the world and uh, people that are infected and it's just uh, it's a very very difficult and dangerous uh, infection that's come upon the world so as we uh, look at this second chronicle 714 uh, first question I have are who are God's people? He's, uh, he's calling us. <clears throat> Who are God's people? Well, God said that he sent the Son of Man to save the world. Now, God's people specifically are the people that serve him, people that believe in him, and people who follow him and do his will and direction. So we understand that part. His people are us, you, myself. And then he has a mandate for the people. And what is that mandate? And I want you to turn to Psalms 24, and I want to read verses 1 through 6. Um, <clears throat> the, the question and statement is, who serves and is approached or approachable to the Lord? Who can approach the throne room of God. Psalms 24, 1 through 6, says this. The earth is the Lord's and all its fullness, the world and the, those who dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the waters. Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord? 
or who may stand in his holy place. Now here's where he, he gives us pretty much the guideline. He who has clean hands, a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul to an idol, nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is Jacob, the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face. So uh, who may stand in God's holy place? He who has clean hands and he who has a pure heart and who hasn't lifted up his soul to idols and sworn deceitfully. So uh, a lot of us have may, may have operated in uh, that directive, but now that we've come under the blood of the Lamb, we're covered uh, by sin, by the blood, it's, it's a covering we have. Now, who serves and is approachable to the Lord is hands and hearts need to be pure. Is your hand pure? Is your heart pure? In other words, have you uh, done things in manners that are uh, not proper by God's eyes? How do you know that? Well, you research the Word of God and, and He'll talk to you about what's right and what's wrong. But uh, your hands are items that we utilize to get involved in things that we shouldn't. Now, your hands need to be pure and your heart. What does he mean by the heart? He means that your spirit inside, the way you live, uh, you are walking in purity. You are daily coming to the throne and repenting and praying and turning toward God. Those who do not worship idols. Now, what's an idol? What is worshiping an idol? An idol simply is something that you put above God and something that you make decisive decisions about before you make any decisive decision toward God and those who do not lie. <clears throat> now liars aren't going to inherit the kingdom of heaven. Do you lie? Do you make it a habit to lie? If you're a liar, I'm telling you to stop lying. I'm telling you repent. Turn your heart from that wicked action. What, and what's the purpose and reason behind a lie? It's to cover yourself. It's to protect yourself. Sometimes it's to protect others. But God says, if you are a liar, he said, you can't approach him. So you're not one of his. And uh, are all these things, these items that I just listed, are they attainable? Yes, they're attainable. Otherwise, he wouldn't give us these patterns to live by an instruction. He's going to give us directives that will be attainable by us. So your driving now needs to be have clean hands, have a pure heart, don't lie, don't worship things that uh, place things above God. And uh, he's going to give us those things and he'll make sure that those items that we can approach him as we stop delving into these types of sin. And Proverbs 1.5 says this, A wise man will hear and increase learning, and a man of understanding will attain wise counsel. Look at what he said, a wise man will hear and increase learning. Are you a wise man? Are you going to increase your learning? Are you going to research the Word of God to find out what a child of God really is? And are you a man of understanding? And you are you attaining wise counsel? Or are you just going to some uh, somebody that really can't counsel you and will just agree with you? Those are some questions that we need to really think through. I'd like you to hear a message from Pastor Gabe. Amen. 
Thank you, Pastor Mike. You know, church, uh, just really miss you guys. But as I was sitting and I was speaking to my dad about, you know, the sermon and everything that's going on, what God was showing me is that this is about obedience. It's about being obedient, what God's word says. It's about being obedient as far as prayer. It's about being obedient in all the things that God tells us to do. It's like I tell my kids, you know, sometimes they get in trouble and, and sometimes we have some rough days. And I tell them, guys, if you just do what we ask, everything will be so much easier. That's the way it is with God. Is God is like, if you just do what I ask, everything will be so much easier. In James chapter 1, it talks about being doers of the word and not just hearers. So in other words, he wants us to do what the word says. We read the word, we apply it, and we do it, and we end up being uh, more successful. We end up being closer to God. We end up being able to overcome trials. It's all in the word. It's all in the book. And just like in John chapter 14, Jesus tells them that if anyone loves me, he will keep my word. And my father will love him and we will come to him and make our home with him. So even Jesus is saying, if we love him, that we will obey his word. In church, it's a very simple thing, but we really just need to study the word, digest it, learn it, and apply it. When we apply it into our lives, there's so much breakthrough. I still have lots of struggles. I still have lots of issues. But the more I delve into the word, the more I delve into my prayer, the more God is evident in my life. So that's what it is, church, is being doers of the word and studying it. And God will be more and more evident in our life. He only wants obedience from us, church. Let's be obedient to the king. Amen. Amen. Glad you're back. And uh, I want to continue on my sermon today, on this Sunday, If My People. The Lord is desiring us to be without pride and to be humble. Why is it that pride is uh, so important that God would tell us to get rid of it? And why does he want us to be humble? Pride, church, begins to blind a person. Pride causes a person to lift themselves up instead of lifting God or others. And what pride does is it blinds you. Now, humility, what that does is it sets you at a lower rung. It puts you in a position where the individual next to you is, is more uh, honorable to you than you are yourself. The persons that you deal with more honorable. I think the Japanese uh, culture really uh, gave us some good direction on being honorable. And uh, I know that Pastor Sashi's in uh, Osaka, Japan. Him and his wife Janet and their son Isaac are there. And uh, they're living there now. They've moved completely over there to Japan. And he really took me through some lessons, taught me what humility really is. And we traveled all over Osaka to see what uh, was really going on in the city, where the people are, the way they live, the peace they walk in, and the humility that they've learned to attain. Humility is so important. <clears throat> but pray not only is a manner of practice, but it's a manner that causes you, when you pray, you seek God's face. You're wanting, seeking God's face is getting his attention, getting him to gaze upon you, getting him to look into you, getting him to see who you are, getting him to see where you're at, and getting him to see what's in you and what you're asking of him and what you're honoring him with, with a real humble spirit. What does seek his face mean? Psalms 27, 8 says this, when you said, seek my face, my heart said to you, your face, Lord, I will seek. 
you do not just want a listening ear. You want an audience. God wants an audience. What they say is an audience of one. God wants just your attention. He wants you to be an audience for him. That you would wait to listen to him, to talk to him, to honor him, to love him, to uh, be a part of him. That's exactly what the Bible is talking about when he says, seek my face. My heart said to you, your face, Lord, will I seek. So your heart speaks the real pure motive to God. <clears throat> when he says, turn from your wicked ways, what is he speaking about? Turning from your wicked ways this is going to be the final approach on the Lord's airstrip. What he's telling us is turn from our sin, turn from our, our desires, turn from our want and go to his want. Turn from our wickedness, turn from the deceitfulness that we lived on the earth. Turn from it. Cry to God, church. If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face. This is what he's telling us. He's telling us to turn from our wickedness. And then he tells us, if you do these things and you turn from your wicked ways and you begin to seek my face and you humble yourself and you pray, he said, then, I will hear from heaven. Then he's going to hear us, church. And not only is he going to hear from heaven, <clears throat> he's going to hear the door of your spirit and heart open the throne room door in heaven. And he's going to forgive our sins and heal our land. We need God to forgive our sins and to heal our land. We so desperately need that church. We need him to begin to see that we are repentant to what has gone on. We are asking for forgiveness. We're coming to him and saying, God, we have been a, a wicked people. We have done wrong to you. We have lived a life improperly. And with doing that, Father, I want to get my heart corrected and redirected. I want my heart to change. I want my spirit to become a spirit on a new journey. I'm calling to you, God. I'm uh, changing and, and turning uh, the way that I've lived. And uh, I want to turn, and I don't ever want to do this again. Father, you're uh, now taking us on a new journey. And we desire this journey to begin to process in you. I want to turn to uh, First Kings, if you would. <clears throat> I'm going to turn to chapter 8. And I want to read verses 35 and 36. And it says this, When the heavens are shut up, and there is no rain, because they have sinned against you when they pray toward this place and confess your name and turn from their sin because you afflict them. Did you hear that? When God afflicts us, God, through this virus, has lifted his hand. Yes, he let it happen, but it happened through the enemy, Satan, and this occurrence came through the ignorance and foolishness of man. And God said, I'm going to let this go. And it's going to spread upon the earth. And yes, you're going to be in affliction. But I have a purpose behind it. Verse 36 then says, Then here in heaven, forgive the sin of your servants, your people Israel, that you may teach them the good way in which they should walk and send rain on your land, which you have given to your people as 
an inheritance. Father, wash away this Huan, Wuhan virus. Wash it away from this earth. Wash it away, Father God, and set us free and change us and save us, Lord. Save us, Father God. Church, in a simple uh, action and text of prayer, I was uh, spending time with uh, a pastor that is in Texas. Been praying with him. We've been uh, talking a lot, and uh, I've been talking to him about his life and about where he's at. And uh, he had given up. He had uh, become discouraged, and didn't know what to do. And so he called me. And he said, "Pastor, I'm uh, I'm in a dilemma. I need God. I need." advice i need direction and he had become bitter and had given up and him and i spoke and god showed me this man needs to get back into understanding and believing prayer and that i'm the god that can answer prayer so we talked we prayed i gave him some direction i said god's going to do this this and this and this is the sign that will show you that he's going to do it. And then after all it's said and done, he's going to do this. So he said, Pastor, I'm going to trust that. I'm going to trust God. And uh, you and I are going to believe God together. And I said, all right, we are now in agreement, brother. And we went into agreement. And the very next day he called me and he said, Pastor, all of the signs have come to pass. Not only that, but God changed everybody's heart and direction. And within one day, all of the answers came to pass. And he was so astounded by what God had done. Here's another simple uh, message that I want to give to you. There's a teenage girl and uh, I, <clears throat> she was a Christian. And she was, uh, the, the mother was always looking away uh, to encourage the daughter. And uh, <clears throat> they were in uh, the garage. And as they stepped down into the garage, uh, they stepped down three stairs that led into the garage from the house. And this lady said, I found my husband standing by his old Mustang looking up toward the ceiling. And he said, it's a hummingbird. He said, pointing uh, to something tiny floating far out of reach. He flew in, but I don't think he knows how to get out. And then uh, she said, I think he was attracted by the red car, I said. But it's bright like a flower. And the daughter had lost faith. She had become discouraged. She didn't know which direction to go. She had become uh, non-responsive to her mother. They had come out to get together with their father. I think they were going to go somewhere. And uh, then the father's there. And Amy was the young girl's name, said, I don't think he feels safe in here. Doesn't he seem kind of worried to you? For 30 minutes, the three of us tried everything we could to think of how to get the bird out. I tempted him with some peach juice that I'd poured into a shallow cup. No luck. Amy ran out to the yard, picked up a colorful flower. She followed the hummingbird around the garage. This young girl holding the flower high, but the bird kept his distance. Finally, Amy's arms dropped in defeat. The bird perched on the garage floor mechanism in the mid middle of the ceiling. I watched him standing by a pegboard where our snowsuits hung for the summer. I give up, I said. There's nothing else we can do. This is the mother speaking. Amy then turned to her mother and her father and said, why don't we pray? 
Amy, who had become unresponsive to prayer, she had become unresponsive to her mother. They had a separation between them. The mother had been trying to get her to pray. That was the first miracle. And then the mother said, I stared at her in surprise, had my doubting teenage daughter just suggesting prayer for the bird, and why hadn't I thought of that? <clears throat> Jesus, please send the bird down so we can help him, I said. We all turned our eyes back to the hummingbird. The more he flittered, the more we fretted. 30 seconds, 45 seconds, the bird flew up. He swooped down toward the pegboard, slid down a snowsuit, right into Amy's waiting hands. She cupped him gently in her palms, walked out quickly, and let him go. God wants to answer your prayers. Simple prayer, not complicated. You don't have to go into the depths and dredges, but just simply pray. That's what Amy did. That's what Amy's mother did. That's what their father did. And this answered prayer came right into the hand of this little girl. And she was able to let the bird go. Do you need God to move? Are you hungry to see everything change in regard to this virus? Will you believe with me that come May 1st, that God will open the heavens and the virus will begin to re be removed from the earth and God would give faith and confidence back to an earth that has lost all confidence and fear has taken over. Pray with me right now. Dear Lord, we pray that you change this entire scenario and that you revamp this entire scene that we're facing with this Wuhan virus. Break it, Lord. Break the back of this virus. Remove it. Remove it from the hearts of people of fear and begin to give us faith, confidence, and move in a great and awesome way, Lord. Father, we thank you. We love you. And we honor you in Jesus' mighty name. Are there some of you that need God in your heart and you don't have him? I'm going to ask you, open your heart right now with me. Say this simple prayer and ask God to begin to change your life. Say, Dear Lord, I admit that I am a sinner. I ask Jesus to come into my heart. I ask him to save me, change me, set me free from the bondages of sin, death, and hell. Be my God, and I will be your servant. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you. And if you want a copy of today's sermon and you want to connect with us, go to our app, New Hope in Christ. And uh, right now, I believe Pastor Roman is putting information down so that you can have the sermon. Also, if you want to give, he'll make that door uh, available on uh, the Internet. Open your hearts, church. Join us again. And don't forget, Monday, I'll be ministering. And I'll be talking to you about a path and pattern of how to pray and how to walk in faith. Join us on Monday. On Tuesday, I'll be talking, or Wednesday, I'm sorry, I'll be talking about the signet ring of God. And on Friday, I'm going to start a series on the end times, and I'm going into the book of Revelation, and I'm going to be starting with chapter 6. 
and we'll be going from there through the book of Revelation to talk more about the end time during the week. That'll start the following Monday. God bless you, church. Have a wonderful day. And Jesus loves you.